Okay, here's section 2.5, another example. This is example uh, 2.5.2. And um, uh, again, I want to, you know, I, I won't do every example, I don't think. Uh, and, uh, um, but I want to draw your attention to some of these. And um, so here, in this example, they're making a statement um, that this matrix, 1, 2, 4, 8, uh, is singular. In other words, it does not have an inverse. And, um, and so, uh, you know, well, at this point, how would we show that? Well, if, if A is singular, then it doesn't have an inverse. So here, they're, they're really trying to do kind of a proof by contradiction. Okay, proof by contradiction. They're going to assume you know, or suppose um, B equals A, B, C, D is uh, A inverse. Now, in, the, in their example, they say an inverse of A, but we know they're unique, so I'm just going to say is A inverse. Okay, so here, the, the idea of proof by contradiction is we're essentially assuming what we want to not be true, right? We want A to be singular. If A is singular, then A inverse doesn't exist. But so we're going to assume uh, it does. So we're assuming the opposite of what we want to prove. And so then... Um, uh, if that is indeed A inverse, we know that A times B is equal to I. But A times B would be 1, 2, 4, 8 uh, times A, B, C, D. And that is supposed to equal 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the matrix multiplication on the left-hand side here. Uh, we get 1 times A uh, plus 2 times C. Uh, we get uh, 1 times B plus 2 times D. And 4 times A plus... Um, 8 times C, and then uh, 4 times B, plus uh, 8 times uh, D. So we get that matrix, and that matrix needs to be equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. Well, for a matrix to be equal, um, each component has to be equal. And so we have A plus 2C is equal to 1, and uh, 4A plus 8C is equal to 0. And then we get um, a very similar uh, situation. B plus 2D is equal to 0, and um, 4B plus 8D is equal to 1. Okay, so that is our, those are our two systems of equations. Now, you know, in the text, they say, well, it's obvious that um, this system here, and, and so this, this system will follow suit, but uh, this system here on the left is, is um, inconsistent. Well, let's make sure of that. Okay, so I have 1, uh, 2, 1 and 4, 8, 0. So there is my system. And now if I uh, have my 1, 2, 1 and take um, 
R2 minus 4R1 and put that back into R2, uh, I get 0, 0, and um, negative 4. And that indeed is inconsistent. So I can't find uh, uh, an A and B. Okay, so so this would would say there's no inverse, right? Um, no inverse. Okay, so that's a that's a contradiction. That's a problem. Okay, so we said there was an inverse, but we we assume there is one. We do some nice math. And we get to an inconsistent problem that doesn't make any sense. And so uh, sometimes you'll see that contradiction as two arrows pointing at each other like that. And at any rate, then we see that A is singular. Okay, so the big thing here is really how they did the proof. Uh, this is a proof by contradiction, and again, you know, we wanted A to be singular, and so the first thing they did was they assumed it was not. But then following um, that assumption, um, they get a contradiction, because if it is invert invertible, we should have been able to find an answer. Um, uh, you know, this A, B, C, D should have been able to find that inverse and it doesn't appear to exist. So that was a contradiction and A is singular.